fucking ghetto boy in the bush way. That's the mentality that keep niggas sick. Come on, dog. You think you're a pit? You meant to grow here, and that's what you pick? Don't worry about me, nigga. See, that is your problem. You always run to your mouth. Remember when mom had that electric problem? Did you help her out? The wine died, nigga. Do be died, nigga. Quincy died, nigga. Debo died, and you could have been with him if you didn't make it out that job. By. Remember when you. What it do? It's your boy Chimney the General Man, and we back with another. Fuck off! Oh, 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 let's go And we got <laughs> the life and death of Ariel Camacho. So y'all already know what time it is, man, because this long overdue. I should have been did this, man. How did I not even see this, man? You know what I mean? And I'm subscribed to Stupid Beyond Belief, man. So, it's long overdue. It's time to get into it. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure follow me on Instagram and all that, man. Y'all ain't know what time it is. Time to get to it. You dig? Stupid Beyond Belief. Y'all already know what time it is. Shout out to Stupid Beyond Belief. When young Belief. artist rises to fame quickly, the vultures tend to follow close behind. Yes, they do. Ariel Camacho formed his group, Los Plebes del Rancho de Ariel Camacho, during the year of 2013. Okay, here we go. Listen. So somebody was telling me you got Los Plebes del Rancho de Ariel Camacho, which is Ariel Camacho. And then when the other dude took over, it switched to... I forgot what it switched to, but it's not this. And they pointed that out, so I knew when it was Ariel Camacho or the dude, you know, after he passed, which is legendary. The dude that that, that uh, made me realize that, shout out to you, man. You was in the comments and you told me. Shout out to you. But let's keep going. Uh, during the year 2013, at the age of 20, what? He formed this group at the age of 20? Wow. After tragically passing less than two years later in February 2015, Camacho's wow. death held his group to stardom, with Ariel sadly not around to reap the benefits. Wow. It was initially formed as a band to support the individual talent of Ariel, would go on after his death to continue performing under the same name. This is despite the rotation of now three new band members and his former record labels suing each other for the royalties. At what point does the use of a dead artist's name and face cross the point of honor and enter exploitation? Although Ariel died in 2015, his shadow very much remains. Right. Sombra. Sombra, the life and death of Ariel Camacho. Ramucci, Sinaloa, Mexico, Sinaloa, hey! Ariel was born July 8th, 1992, to Father Benito and Mother Ronaldo, a humble farming family. 1992, July 8th. He was given the birth name of Jose Ariel Camacho Barraza, and was reported to be full of love and music from a young age. As early as preschool, his family recalls him taking an interest in music and dance. Mm, there we go, G. Camacho was brought up in rural Sinaloa during an era in which regional Mexican music was beginning to attract serious commercial success. Mm. 92 would be the same year that Sinaloan legend... This is a Camacho birthplace. Yes, sir. Give me the scene. Ido Sanchez was murdered just an hour outside the birthplace of Camacho. Wow. This is legendary. I don't think nobody told me this right here. Hold on, 92. The year. You know what I mean? The legend, Talino Sanchez, was murdered. Just an hour away, or an hour outside the birthplace of Camacho. That's crazy. He was born. Ariel's was especially fond of the guitar, and after receiving one as a gift from his father, his family claimed that he never put it down. It was his paternal grandfather that would give Ariel's first nickname, La Tuya, roughly translated to, you've made that guitar yours. Bruh, and if y'all know how crazy this dude is, this dude was on Guitar Hero Expert when I first seen him. <laughs> guitar Hero Expert. 
You don't know how hard it is to play expert on Guitar Hero, bro. No. It is claimed that Ariel began seriously singing at the age of 12 and shortly became friends with Cesare Ivan Sanchez at middle school, fellow guitar player and Camacho's eventual bandmate. Mm. Ariel's favorite musicians as a child were Miguel and Miguel, a hometown duo that were famous for their dueling vocals and the use of the traditional 12 string requinto. Ariel appreciated both their technical skill and the image they portrayed of rural ranchers. See, this is what I like about this right here. Because not only did he like them, he liked that they skill. And, and that's where music go with, you know, hip hop. It's about skill, whether they like it or not. Right now, people, all people say is, oh, all you got to do is have a hit. And you, you dope. You the dopest because you got a hit. Man, without skill, you ain't nothing. I could put you in a room with a real skilled person that can, you know what I'm saying, put words together so crazy, they'll make you look dumb. But you over here, oh, I, I, mean, I got hints, though. Them hints don't mean nothing when you when you in a room full of bar killers. When you in a room full of real rappers that can out bar you, you're going to look stupid. You know what I mean? Anybody could lose a battle. You seen Drake lose to Pusha T. Why? Because Pusha T was skilled. He he had a he had a mindset. He said, "Oh, I know I'm gonna get this thing. It was skill thing. You know what I mean? But we are gonna keep going. Shout out to uh, Ariel Camacho for you know what I'm saying. Not just focus on their music, but their technique, their skill, and all that. You know what I mean? Camacho sought out the services of a. That means he took it serious. My bad for pausing, but that means he took it serious. Burgos to play the accompanying tuba. The inclusion was seen as unusual, but their music maintained traditional elements, bringing new life to the Sorreño genre. Right. The Sorreño style evolved at the much older Norteño genre into its own distinct rural variation. Sorreño music hailed. This is icy. This guitar is icy. Icy! From the northwestern Sierra mountain ranges of Mexico. Traditional accompaniments include a 12 string guitar and guitar like instruments named the Baja Sexto, 6th bass, and Baja Quinto, 5th bass. Okay. Ariel modernized these elements by swapping the mix for a 12 string guitar, a 6 string acoustic guitar, and a tuba to cover mm. the octaves. Omar's addition to the group made them complete, but it seems that even at the height of their fame, tension may have existed between the group. Mm. The group decided to perform under the name Ariel Camacho y los Prebes del Rancho, translated to English, Ariel Camacho and the Guys from the Ranch. By 2013, the group had begun to perform locally, seeking out a record deal from any labels that would listen. Right. Now the group's rise to fame is surrounded by controversy, and to this day, legal disputes. The very first instance of Ariel Camacho appeared... Hold on, I just want to make sure something real quick. Cause right here, hold on, let me go back right here. Ayo Camacho and Ayo Camacho y Los Pebes de Rancho. Cause remember I just told y'all in the beginning, what that say? Los Pebes de Rancho de Ayo Camacho. But this was Ayo Camacho first. Oh, see, now I'm lost. You see how that worked? Because in the beginning, I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm only three minutes in. About to be four, so I'll go back so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Right here, I say, Los Plebes de Rancho de Ariel Camacho. So this after or before? Because on the other one we just seen, which is right here. I'm going to go back to it, y'all. Give me one second. It say, you know, Ariel yeah. Camacho e Los Pebles de Rancho. To whom shall I send it? Bro, why is Siri? Stop, Siri. Okay, I won't send this. 2013, the group had begun to perform locally, seeking out. Let me see this record deal from any labels that would listen. Now the group's rise to fame is surrounded by controversy and to this day, legal disputes. The very first instance of Eric Camacho appearing on YouTube was February 10th, 2013, uploaded by account 8 Promotions GN. It was a solo video of Ariel playing a cover track that to this day remains relatively undiscovered. Wow. 
After a string of solo releases, some of which have been unearthed by Camacho fans and made popular, the first setting of the group appeared on May 31st, 2013, uploaded by another relatively small channel. Oddly enough, this version would have less than 5k views, while the Dell Records version, uploaded almost a year later, has 42 million views to date. Golly. Dell Records would end up being an important figure in the Camacho story, but more on that later. And I think I might have reacted to that if I'm not tripping. I think I might have, I ain't gonna lie. The trio would crop up over social media throughout the rest of 2013, yet it seems that they would only release three studio tracks, each with accompanying videos. All tracks and videos shared the same thing in common, the association of JG Music, presented clearly in the beginning of each video. Okay. JG Music, or sometimes referred to as JG Entertainment, is a Mexican-based record label. Finding exact information on the company is difficult, and after repeated attempts to reach out to the company for an interview, there is no word back. Although their social media not. presence only started around 2016-2017, based on Camacho's videos, it appears that they are operating as early as 2012-2013. The label was founded by Jamie Gonzalez, who at that time was working in America. Okay. Then you gotta watch out for dudes like him. interview he gave with Pepe Garza, he indicates that Ariel reached out to Jamie over email during late 2012 and asked for help in developing and producing an album. Gonzalez had seen Camacho perform live previously, and he knew that he was talented. Jamie also claims that the idea to include tuba over bass was his idea, and that Ariel had initially pushed for bass in the traditional Sereno style. Right. Gonzalez was a former musician that turned to the management and production side. As luck would have it, 2012 would be the same year that Jamie would encourage his 13-year-old son Christian to start composing lyrics. Jamie apparently had a keen eye for talent. Alright. His son Christian would break out in his own right during January 2017, and is now a sizable figure in the regional Mexican genre. Alright. The group began touring around the Sinaloan state, now mostly playing originals written by Camacho himself. Early social media videos seemed to focus on Ariel and Cesar's guitar ability and chemistry between each other, as their talent... So bad, come on. So Caesar's guitar, I've never seen Caesar then. Or unless Caesar's in a group and uh, I'll be hearing Caesar and I'm thinking that's Ariel Camacho. You know how that be, man, I don't know. But I know Ariel Camacho, you know what I mean? He one of them. You don't want to mess with him, he's crazy. It's clear without a full accompaniment. The group released two albums during 2013, with the second release recorded and produced by JG Music. It was obvious that the more budget and opportunity the group was given would only stand to benefit the quality of the music that they were delivering. Right. On December 30th, 2013, a YouTube channel named MP3 Culiacan 2 would upload a live version of a track by the group titled El Karma. Although the recording was not perfect, as soon as Camacho's opening vocals cut through, it was clear to see that they had a hit. <laughs> Sadly, it seems that some of Camacho's lyrics were destined to become true. 2014 would be a whirlwind year for the group, and one that would invite interest from all sides. On March 11, 2014, a YouTube channel was established under the name Ariel Camacho. That same day, the channel's very first video was uploaded, simply titled Ariel Camacho El Karma. El Karma. From the song to the video to the group's image, it seemed like something the genre had never seen. The very next day, the group uploaded two more videos of professional level quality with no mention of JG Music or any affiliation. Mm. The group's momentum slowly began to build, and by April 2014, they had an undeniable buzz. Oddly enough, by April 10th, 2014, a version of El Karma was uploaded to YouTube by a user named J. Adrian Vasquez. This time, the video was branded by JG Music, was said to be directed by Mario Chavez, and written by someone named El Diaz. What? What's going Citing on? Citing a 2015 Pitchfork article, Karma Comes Back to You Hard, the database of performing rights organization BMI attributes El Karma to one Priscilla Ruby Roca, an apparent relative of the mysterious figure who collects his royalties. The same article claims that El Diaz is actually an individual named Diego. Additionally, Roca also collects royalties for songs likely written by El Diaz under the names Diego Roca and Diego Avendano. Mm. 
On April 30th, a little over a month and a half past the debut of El Karma, it appears that Ariel and the group had taken up new affiliations with the much bigger Dell Records, based out of Bell Gardens, California. On that day, five songs and videos of Camachos were uploaded to YouTube, now donning the Dell Records logo. We sold all these records, man. What's going on? Salt into the wounds. El Karma was even re-uploaded by Dell Records with the existing JG Music watermark, where it still lives to this day as the most popular version on the internet. Wow. So the crazy. early signs of a long-going conflict between JG Music and Dell Records. The exact reason why Ariel left JG Music and joined Dell Records is unclear. Although the opportunities available at Dell Records must have undoubtedly been leagues above. Dell provided the trio unprecedented distribution, reach, and the opportunity to collaborate with established artists like Grupo Fernandez. Right. Jamie Gonzalez was even featured in a video uploaded by Dell Records following the passing of Camacho, where he was mentioned to be his manager. This is a likely indication that although Ariel and the group signed with Dell Records in 2014, he still valued and respected the opinion of the owner of his former record label. However, the relationship between Jamie and Dell Records seemed to live and die with Camacho. Mm. Dell Records was founded by Angel Del Villar in 2008 after previously running a fencing company in Bell Gardens, California. The decision to enter the music industry may have been met with success after its discovery of Gerardo Ortiz in 2010, but the founder's past is far murkier than his public image of charity and savviness portray. Mm. In fact, when current Californian Congresswoman Lucille Roybal Allard gave a public statement in Congress during May 2017 supporting Del Villar's character, I'm not sure if she knew his full past either. Both I'm Angel and his family sure. business, Del Steele, had countless instances of litigation and civil suits as a result of some business deals gone sour. Mm. Angel's history also includes multiple suits including the Department of Child Services and is believed to be ex-wife. Mm. During a preliminary search of cases involving Del Steele, there's an incredible amount of activity from 2006 onwards. This includes breach of contract, contractual fraud, fraud with no contract, multiple collection cases, mortgage foreclosures, wrongful Dang. termination, and an unlawful detainer case. But he couldn't be black, because then it got that nigga quick. When looking quick. at Del Records specifically, <laughs> the amount of lawsuits and civil suits are downright surprising. A common theme throughout the cases centers around trademark disputes around the rights of ownership between former artists including Louis Coronel, King Lil G, King Lil G. Ortiz, and even Ariel Camacho y Los Plebas del Rancho, but more on that later. On September 23rd, 2014, the group would release their first album on Dell Records. All right, listen, I'm about to give y'all a hint. Matter of fact, it ain't no hint. This is on my birthday, you know what I mean? It's 2014 though, but still. September 23rd is my birthday. Mark it down, write it down. It don't even matter. Karma, yeah, I know it now. after their hit from the summer. When the album initially came out, some reviews labeled the songs as a bit repetitive, with all 14 tracks following the same formula of a requinto, an acoustic, and a tuba to play the bass lines. Despite the similarity to some, this was Camacho's ode to tradition, and would bring an undeniable... Within weeks of their release, the group had already reached some Let's incredible go back a little bit. incredible authenticity to his work. Within weeks of their release, the group had already reached incredible milestones. Concert venues progressed from bars to nightclubs to live television. It was easy to see that the group was led by the young face star Ariel, who at this point still had his braces. Mm. On January 30th, 2015, the trio played a sold out show at Las Pulgas Tijuana. Camacho's shows were tangibly different now, playing to sold out crowds and rabid fans that had his songs already memorized and would sing along with yes, the he had the whole mindset, you know what I'm saying, of uh, everything. He knew what he wanted to do. He knew how he wanted the strings to be. He, This dude, man, these, these are the people you got to watch out for because they, they legendary. Because he knew exactly what he wanted and got it how he wanted, you know what I mean? By all appearances, three members seemed to get along great with each other. Although they were undeniably a group, the friendship between Ariel and Cesar was one that existed past just the music. They were two childhood friends that both came up together from humble beginnings, and their dedication to music was finally paying off. And Shout out to the close friends, you know what I'm saying, your homies and all them you grew up with that y'all can do business with too, you know what I mean? Because that's not likely, you know what I mean? And fortune. At the end of the day, they had the opportunity to share the excitement and thrill of becoming star musicians together, 
get no good times lost forever. February 24th. Agnostra, Sinaloa. While attending the 2015 Carnaval de Morosito, Camacho spontaneously hopped on stage to perform his rendition of the hit El Karma, which would evidently be the last living footage of Ariel Camacho. Ariel himself posted to Facebook that he was headed to Angostura for a concert the next day, so it's likely that he decided to make the hour-long drive home in the early hours of the night. Yeah. While traveling along the Angostura La Reforma Highway around 2 to 3 a.m., Camacho was driving a 1994 sand-colored Honda Accord with four additional passengers in the car. It is suspected that the vehicle was speeding excessively and that Camacho was potentially inebriated. This was put together based on the discovery of skid marks as long as 80 meters and a revelation that Camacho had previously been in an accident during August 2014 as a result of driving truck. Mm. Ariel and Melina Duran would succumb to fatal injuries from the crash and pass away immediately. Julio mm. Valverde would pass away later in a nearby hospital. Shirley Tavazon and Maria Guadalupe Felix would endure through life-threatening injuries and remain the only survivors from the accident. Wow. The crash occurred at this bend in the highway, and there's no evidence of any foul play. The social media era provided an extra level of insight into the incident, and an added level of sadness, as you could see the group react to the news in real time. There was an incredible outpouring of support for Ariel and his family after his death, and his popularity reached heights never seen before. Mm. His funeral is an incredible sight, with his closest friends and family serenading the fallen star and paying their respect to a musician taken far too soon. Although El Karma reached number 14 on the Latin billboards the month before Camacho's death, it would skyrocket to number one during the second week of March. Additionally, we have two more posthumous number one hits, 11... Which is cold. We not gonna sit here and say that though, cause I see it with even hip hop. Like, I know some people they they won't even play their music. Like Nipsey Hussle, they was not playing his music on the radio until he died, bro. Which is cold. Pop Smoke, they wasn't really playing his music until he died, bro. They was playing some songs, but they wasn't playing his music when he died, bro. I don't care what nobody say. It's crazy. Top ten hits and seventeen songs in total that charted. The group's success marked the first time that a traditionally styled song reached number one in over five years, and major mm. live recording labels took notice. The group's revitalization of traditional regional music was no longer an anomaly, it became a viable commodity. So much so that Dell Records announced that they decided to continue the group past Camacho's death with an entirely new vocalist, and continue to use his name as an honor. As early as March 4th, 2016, Dell Records released an entirely new album under the name Los Plebes del Rancho de Ereo Camacho. Now, okay, see, now I see. Now I see. Okay, so when Ereo Camacho is Ereo Camacho, yeah, that's that. And then this one. I, I already got it. Don't even tell me I already got Castro it. In Ariel's place. The value of associating with Ariel. Let me, let me so see his name one more time. Manuel Lopez Castro. Featuring Jose Manuel Lopez Castro yeah. in Ariel's place. The value of associating with Ariel was so lucrative that Jamie Gonzalez decided to convince the reform trio to leave Dell Records and follow him to JG Music under the same name. What follows next is a convoluted mess of lawsuits, name changes, and squabbling over the right to carry on Camacho's legacy. When the dust settled, two new groups were formed in their place with Jose Manuel Lopez Castro and Cesar Sanchez siding with JG Music, and Amar Burgos siding with Dell Records. What? In the current iteration, only Cesar Sanchez remains from the original three. I have no doubt that Cesar has the most honest intentions with carrying on Ariel's legacy. Yeah, man. Sure. Come on, man. If that was y'all boy, you know what I mean? Carry the legacy. Ain't no more with carrying the legacy, man. You know what I mean? This crazy. Niggas wanna leave him, you know. His old friend. Yet the continued use of Ariel's name, image, and spirit is something that feels sordid and wrong, and like a move motivated by money. I do not doubt that Ariel's parents have given their blessing and appreciate the love and support from his fans. For this, I'm undoubtedly happy. 
Alright. Shout out to his family. September 28th, 2020, Dell Records and JG Music. Because you don't know how hard that is to let your kids go out in the world. I ain't got none, but I'm just saying. Just imagine having kids if you don't got any. And you letting them out to the world. And you thinking everything going to be all right. And next thing you know, they don't come back. Yeah. That's hard, man. We're in continued litigation over the copyright ownership of Ariel's work and namesake. To me, I don't see these disputes as a defense of Ariel's legacy, but to the same effect as buzzards picking at a fallen carcass. Look, man. The, the, the royalties, copyright, should go to his family. You know what I mean? Simple as that. You dig. Besides, it seems like Dell Records may have bigger problems to tend to as of late. Dang. Oh, my. Please like, share, and subscribe. Support the channel. Come on, man. Stupid beyond beliefs, man. Come on now. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them below in the comments. My comments, his comments, all that, man. Let me know what y'all think. What is y'all opinions on his, his death situation? Or the, the copyright situation? How all that's going? Uh, you know what I mean? Let me know what y'all how y'all feel on this, man. It's your boy, Chimney General. And I'm out. Yeah. Figured out she was playing board games on my chest. I feel sorry, psych. I don't care if she was in trouble, Pike. Saying yes, she loved a tan. Lying said she loved a man. Her name should be Spider because she loved a win. Had me guessing from the top of my dome like headbands. Everything was really good. I thought we really had a plan.